Thyroid disease is actually a fairly complex topic with lots of little details and nuances you could talk about. What I'm going to do in this lecture is make it as simple as possible, especially at the M3 level. You don't need all the nuances that an endocrinologist is going to go into. This lecture is about hyper and hypothyroidism. The lecture that follows is about nodules and cancers. So let's start off by talking about the physiology of thyroid. The hypothalamus is going to secrete TRH, which is going to tell the anterior pituitary to make TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, which tells the thyroid to make T4. And T4 is the spark plug for the body. It gets things moving. It literally allows you to move. It gets your brain moving, gets mentation, and gets you metabolically active. Movement, metabolism, and mentation are driven by T4. Without T4, you basically can't live. And as we discussed in the anterior pituitary lecture, there's a feedback mechanism by which if there's an excess of T4, T4 will feed back on TSH to turn it off, as it will onto TRH to turn it off, and TSH should inhibit TRH. Too much T4 inhibits TSH, too little T4 disinhibits TSH. And this becomes really important. You'll see why in a minute. Let's talk about hyperthyroidism first because it's definitely the one that has the more details. And if you can master hyperthyroidism, hypothyroidism is very easy. So what are the symptoms of someone with hyperthyroid? Now I will also say that I'm going to use the terms hyperthyroid and hypothyroid where really people will use the word thyrotoxicosis to mean the symptoms of too much T4, and hyperthyroidism means specifically coming from the thyroid. That distinguishing, distinguishing between those is not relevant for you. So wherever we say hyperthyroid, what we mean is thyrotoxicosis, too much T4. So if you've got too much T4, and it's about movement, metabolism, and mentation, symptoms of hyperthyroidism are going to be things like tachycardia. Your heart is moving too fast. If your bowels move too fast, you get diarrhea. If your metabolism is ramped up, you're going to be burning heat, so you'll be heat intolerant. You are hot when everyone else is cold. There will be increased deep tendon reflexes. And if you're having all this diarrhea and burning all this energy, you're likely to see some weight loss. And in the case of hyperthyroidism, you might see AFib. Now, for most cases of hyperthyroidism, you're going to be screening with the TSH. For all thyroid disease, you screen with the TSH. Your first test is always a TSH, and you confirm with a free T4. For most cases of hyperthyroidism, the free T4 is going to be elevated. And because free T4 turns off TSH, the TSH will be low. Low TSH hyperthyroidism. The exception to this is the central hyperthyroidism we talked about in anterior pituitary, where the elevated TSH drives the T4. Very rare. Just recognize that it might be on a test, but for most cases of thyroid disease, a low TSH increased T4 is hyperthyroidism, which is why you won't get asked that on the test. What you're going to get asked is... How do you interpret the Ryu scan, the radioactive iodine uptake? And what we we'll want to do is list the diseases of hyperthyroidism and show you how the radio radioactive iodine uptake separates them from each other. All of them will have low TSH, increased T4. We want to talk about Graves' disease, thyroiditis. multi-nodular goiter and toxic adenoma, and then factitious disorder versus stroma ovarii. Okay, in Graves' disease, you're going to have a normal thyroid that has all these receptors on it. And it just happens that 
thyroid stimulating antibodies are made which activate these receptors. So these receptors are all over the thyroid and these antibodies stimulate growth and activity. So growth will be universal, so you get a really big thyroid, and activity. The Ryu scan works by uptaking radioactive iodine wherever T4 is being made. In Graves' disease, since these receptors are everywhere, everywhere is producing T4. So what you're going to see on the scan is the whole thyroid is going to light up. That tells you it's Graves' disease. Now there's some nuances to Graves' disease you do need to know about. There might be the specific findings of Graves' disease, which is exophthalmos, buggy eyes, and the muddy shins, pretibial myxedemia. Myxedema. Along with Graves' disease are those thyroid stimulating antibodies. So if you have an option to check, you could check for thyroid stimulating antibodies. And the treatment for Graves' disease is going to be the one that's different for the rest. Graves' disease responds very well to medical therapy. Thionamides. This is PTU or methimazole. We used to teach that PTU is safe in pregnancy, PP, and methimazole is the one you can use everywhere else, but really they are essentially equivocal. Graves' disease is going to respond to medical therapy and may even go into remission. But much like the other diseases, you can still use radioactive iodine ablation in surgery. We'll talk about that in a minute. Just be careful because if they have exophthalmos or pretibial myxedema caused by antibody deposition, they'll need steroids and surgery because radioactive iodine may make these worse. Know a lot about Graves' disease because it has the most details, but just recognize that the rest of these are going to be pretty simple. So in thyroiditis, you have a thyroid that has preformed T4 in it. And then some itis comes along and causes a problem. And the thyroid fractures. And all that T4 spills out. So you're going to have a transient hyperthyroid state. And then once the, all that thyroid is dumped out, either the thyroid will heal or it'll shrivel up and die. Shrivel up and die is Hashimoto's. During the time of the hyperthyroidism, no new T4 is being made, so a radioactive iodine uptake would look totally cold. This is return to function, new T4 comes back, loss of function, Hashimoto's. And for thyroiditis, there's the painful kind, which is going to be to queer veins, subacute granulomatous or infectious thyroiditis, and painless, which is usually Hashimoto's or some autoimmune related disease. Multinodular goiter and toxic adenoma are essentially the same thing. Multinodular goiter means there's just multiple nodules. And toxic means makes T4. So in multinodular goiter, there's a bunch of these little, little things that are active. And in toxic adenoma, there's just one really big one. And they're all making T4. Now in both these cases, because T4 is being made in excess, they're autonomously being secreted, the TSH will be depressed. The rest of the thyroid is not going to be doing anything because there's no stimulation, there's no TSH. But these are active. So on a Ryu uptake, you're going to see exactly that. You're going to see that goiter light up. Factitious and stroma ovarii are going to be on the test because they're going to present very similarly. Factitious disorder is essentially exogenous T4 being ingested. And stroma ovarii is going to be an ovarian lesion producing T4. The reason why they're compared against each other is because the vignette is going to be a woman in the healthcare field. And you're going to have some semblance that she's trying to lose weight or has body image issues. And all of a sudden she starts developing symptoms of T4. 
It has to be a woman, not because women abuse medications more often, but because only women could have a uterus with ovaries that could cause this differential. Because in either case, T4 is coming from somewhere else, you're going to have a completely cold thyroid. And what you're going to have to do before you confront her about her factitious disorder is get a Cestamibi scan of the stroma ovarii, looking at the ovaries, making sure she doesn't actually have a surgical intervention ready. Now you'll notice, other than for Graves' disease, I didn't really talk about treatment. Well, I did that on purpose because I want to talk about treatment as it relates to the severe illness, thyroid storm. So, thyroid storm. It's far more complex than this, and there's a scoring system. But what I want you to see, what I want you to look out for on the test for thyroid storm, is severe hyperthyroidism that is causing a life-threatening emergency. They're not just tachycardic. They're going to be in florid AFib, and our heart is beating so fast, they're in shock. They don't just have heat intolerance. They are burning up. It's a severe fever. And they're hypotensive. And even though the T4 gets their mind to move, they're going to be altered. And thyroid storm is going to be treated with a storm cloud. The first thing you're going to do is cool them down. Give them cool IV fluids and cooling blankets. Get their temperature under control. That might help their hypotension. Because it's a storm cloud. It's got a little lightning bolt. And you do these things in this order. The first thing you want to do is a beta blocker like propranolol. Reduce the autonomic symptoms of hyperthyroidism. Then you want to use one of these thionamides, either PTU or methimazole. It doesn't matter which you pick. And three, reduce the peripheral conversion of T4 to the more active T3 by giving steroids. You can use these medications in all of these diseases, recognizing that only Graves' disease is going to respond in the short term to the thionamides. You can use thionamides for these other diseases, but they're not going to work, especially multinodular goiter and toxic adenoma. They'll need lifelong medical therapy, which is no good. So if lifelong medical therapy is not an option, what is? Well, you've got surgical resection and radioactive iodine. Radioactive iodine ablation is generally what you want to use for multinodular goiter and toxic adenoma, as well as stroma ovarii. Wherever that ryu lit up, radioactive iodine will kill, and it will leave everything else alone. So generally, you want th this for these diseases. Whereas surgery is going to be reserved for Graves' disease because of the worsening of exophthalmos with radioactive iodine ablation. You can also learn some thyroid-stimulating antibodies, TPO antibodies, and stuff like that, but they're generally not high-yield enough. What I want you to see is hyperthyroidism is going to be overactive everything, TSH low, T4 high, and then the RIU scan is going to correlate with the pathology of the disease, and you can treat with PT or methimazole for most of these diseases to get them under control, but surgery or iodine ablation is definitive. Pick surgery for graves, radioactive iodine ablation for everything else. Hyperthyroidism was a little overwhelming. I bet you're thinking to yourself, well, I thought you said this was supposed to be easy. It is. As long as you can manage the Ryu scan, you're doing pretty well. Now let's talk about hypothyroidism, and you can see just how easy this becomes. You should be able to fill in the blanks pretty quickly. But hypothyroidism is going to be exactly the opposite. You'll have bradycardia rather than tachycardia. Constipation. cold intolerance. The patient is cold, everyone else is warm. Decrease deep tendon reflexes and weight gain. And this is why hypothyroidism is so easy. It does not matter how you get to hypothyroidism. And of course, because hypothyroidism is going to be decreased T4, you're going to screen with the TSH, and the screening test is going to show you the TSH is elevated, 
because it, there's too little T4, so the feedback loop is disinhibited, except in that rare condition where the pituitary is the problem, the TSH will be low and the T4 will be low. That's rare. Generally, what you should see is the TSH is up, the T4 is down. That is the diagnosis of hypothyroidism. And if you have hypothyroidism, regardless of the cause, you just give them what they don't have, which is levothyroxine. Now, the most common cause is iatrogenic. We treated Graves' disease. The most common non-iatrogenic cause is Hashimoto's. Get those TPO antibodies to confirm, even though it doesn't matter. It could be any other cause at all, but it doesn't matter because you do the same thing. The only time it does matter is in the condition called subclinical. And subclinical means the TSH is elevated, but they have no symptoms. If you're going for a 270, know that you do treat subclinical if the TSH is greater than or equal to 10, or there are symptoms of hypothyroidism, you begin treatment. But to close out, just as we had a severe illness, thyroid storm, we of course have a severe illness on the other side called mixed edema coma. And in mixed edema coma, one, you're in a coma, you're not just cold intolerant, you actually are hypothermic. And the hypothermia is leading to hypotension. And very sim similarly to the treatment of hyperthyroidism, the thyroid storm, we're going to use intravenous fluids, only this time they're going to be warmed, and blankets that are warmed get the temperature up, and then we give them what they don't have. We give them IV T4, and if that doesn't work, the more potent form, T3. Okay. The thing that gets students tripped up all the time is the TSH for almost all patients. A low TSH is because of a high T4. Low TSH means hyperthyroidism. A high TSH means that there's not enough T4, so an elevated TSH means hypothyroidism, except in the case of the central causes, which are super rare. Get that straight. Then you'll be able to interpret the Ryu scan to figure out which disease it is. Remember, thyroid-stimulating antibodies for Graves' disease and anti-TPO for Hashimoto's. Give levothyroxine for hypothyroidism, and your options to treat are going to be PT or methimazole, it doesn't matter which one you choose, as well as surgery or radioactive iodine, choosing surgery for Graves, radioactive iodine for any of these overactive nodules. That's thyroid disease.